Din 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 ja din din din. Hi, I'm Gindi Walker. In this video, I'm going to show you the Mendrito Roverso Falso cutting combination and the guard of Sopra Braccio, overarm guard. So we'll start with the guard. You form the guard generally right foot forwards or dominant foot forwards or with your feet together. The buckler is extended towards the imaginary opponent or towards the opponent and the boss of the buckler should face the sword shoulder of that opponent. So if I was fencing against a right-hander, so if you're right-handed, I might be turned a little bit that way. And if I was fencing against a left-hander, I'd be turned a little bit that way. I just want to cover the line where the attack is going to come from. So buckler's out, my sword rests over my arm with the hilt kind of over my elbow and the true edge facing a little bit up. And that way I'm really, really ready to cut my roverso. And you'll notice when I'm holding the buckler that the thumb is along the handle and my finger is over the cross on the side sword. You can also form a very similar guard called sotto braccio just by moving the buckler over the top. And usually when I do that one, I put my um, hilt a little bit further back because there's a bit more space back here, sort of under my armpit. But in all other ways, it's the same. And it's also held feet together or with the dominant foot forwards. So that's the guard of sopra braccio and sotto braccio. And then um, the cutting pattern that we're going to look at today, so I'll drop the buckler, is a mandrito roverso falso. So mandrito cutting from the right, Reverso, cutting from the left, rising with the false edge for the falso. And each of these cuts is directed towards the opponent's hand in general. Mandrito, reverso, falso. Mandrito, reverso, falso. So it's worth just practicing that and getting comfortable with those cuts. And then we're going to add the buckler back in. So with the buckler, I can cut above or below the buckler. We're going to start by cutting above. What you want to do is you want to make space by turning the buckler hand. So from turning it out, turning it in, out to in, as I cut. And I want to bring my sword hand and my buckler basically as close together as I can. And that's because I'm cutting at my opponent's hands and they're cutting at my hands. And so I want my buckler to protect my hands. There and then finish by withdrawing it into guard. So, mandrito over the arm, withdraw it into guard. And I want to kind of use my forearms as a stop for that mandrito. So my buckler forearm stops my sword arm forearm and that allows me to come back to guard quicker. Once I'm there, I make my reverso, don't need to move my buckler, and my falso. And I can kind of just door the buckler a little bit. Just open the door slightly as I make the falso to create space. Vendrito, reverso, falso. You should practice that. Okay, now we're gonna practice the same thing, but we're gonna do it under the buckler. This one is a little bit trickier in some ways because rather than turning the buckler to the inside like that, I'm gonna turn it to the outside like that. And my thumb is gonna be extended and pointing down. So earlier I was turning fingernails up like that. Now I'm turning thumb down. So I cut mandrito under the buckler. And then as I do the reverso, I make the turn so that I can put the two things together. And then I turn the buckler back and make my falso. Mandrito, reverso, falso. Mandrito, reverso, falso. If you're comfortable with those actions without footwork, we should add some footwork in. So the first piece of footwork for that one is with a advancing step of the dominant foot. So I make mandrito, reverso, falso as I bring the feet together. Reverso, no step, and back. 
And I can do the same thing cutting overarm as well. So I cut mandrito, reverso, falso. And it's worth just tapping the buckler on the way through because it tells you that you're in the right place. If you're comfortable with that advance and gather back, then you can add in some other kinds of footwork. So we can do an advance and recover, gather back. Show you that again, probably yep, from this angle is best. We're going to advance, recovery step, gather back. Advance, recovery step, gather back. Advance, recovery step, gather back. And you could do a full circle of the room like that. That would be helpful. It's worth practicing. Same thing, overarm. I'm going to overarm, cut, withdraw. Mandrito, reverso, falso. And again, you can go all the way around with that one. Um, finally, there's the traverse. Now, the traverse is a bit of a tricky one. So I make my advancing step to one side and then I do a passing step to the other side as I make the next cut. From there, I'm just gonna turn my buckler back and come into guard. This guard's called Coda Lunga Alter. So when I do this one, I won't usually end up doing the falso. I'll show you that again. So advance, traverse, recover or pivot the other side, advance, traverse, pivot. Make sure you practice that a little bit. And if it's feeling comfortable, then we can move on to the same thing, but overarm. Advance, traverse, and from here, it's actually kind of nice because I've got a bit more space. I'm cutting from high to low to do my recovery step and then gather my feet as I um, do the falso. So I'll show you that again. So overarm, traverse, down, falso. Overarm, traverse, down, falso, gathering together. And that's kind of nice because you can make a flow of it. So those are some nice buckler actions to practice, sword and buckler, um, as well as some good footwork actions that'll give you some ideas about what, what to do. Um, most of those actions can be found in either Manchelino's first assault or Morozzo's first assault. They both use the, that cutting pattern like a lot with lots and lots of different kinds of footwork. So get comfortable with it. It's a great sword and buckler basic. Enjoy.